It's an amazing day and the sky is calling. So let's go flying. Hi, this is Dan. Owens Lake looked like this in many of the years that I've seen it, nearly empty and with its last water turned to brine and colored blood red. It's not like this lately though. Today we'll be aboard Cardinal 220, flying due north from Camarillo for about an hour and a half. Our flight will be direct to Owens Lake in the Owens Valley of Eastern California. The tall mountains of the Sierra Nevada are between here and there, but the weather's great today, so we'll plan to fly over them instead of around. An hour into the flight finds us at 9,500 feet over the Paiute Mountains, just southeast of Isabella Lake. The Paiutes are a sub-range of the southern Sierra Nevada and are within the Sequoia National Forest. They're not exactly remote, but they are obscure. Most people only see them as the southern backdrop to Isabella Lake. There's some small communities with no services and a few abandoned gold mines up here, but mostly it's quiet and natural. We're just east of Isabella Lake and crossing the Kern River Valley. Ahead of us is the Kern Plateau with snow-capped Olancha Peak in the background. Opposite the lake is East Fork Valley, which leads to the desert side of one of the few low passes across the Sierras. Dome land is so much elevated and exposed granite bedrock with its covering weathered away over millions of years. Granite tends to form domes and spires as it's released from the weight of the material above it. Its light color is from being largely made of silicates which are similar to glass. Granite is not volcanic rock and these mountains are not volcanoes. But in a few scattered places in Domeland, there are bluffs of black basalt that are the remnants of volcanoes that may have never been fully formed. Though it doesn't look it, this is early January. We're in high, cold country, well above 7,000 feet, and there's no snow except on the highest peaks of the Sierra Crest. This is in stark contrast to last year's record snow. We're crossing the Sierra Crest near Olancha Pass, where the mountains suddenly drop away into the Owens Valley. Looking east from over the Owens, we see the Darwin Plateau and Panamint Valleys. Looking north, Owens Lake comes into view, fuller than I've ever seen it. Sage Flat is just below. It seems too steep to be a flat, and indeed, it rises halfway up the crest to become the trailhead to Olancha Pass. We're over Owens Lake and descending for landing in nearby Lone Pine. I'm amazed at how the lake has changed. This is how it looked six years ago with hardly any water at all. Today it looks like a proper lake, but there's still room to expand quite a bit more over on its east side. What's most remarkable about the lake is how greatly man has affected it. Drained of its water to benefit the city of LA, it turned into an environmental disaster. Before LA tried to fix it, the dry lake bed was one of the worst sources of dust air pollution in the U.S. Fortunately, an extremely wet winter came along that solved that problem, at least for now. We had a quick stop in Lone Pine and now we're pointed south and on our way home. The sun sets quickly this time of year and it's even faster here when the Owens falls under the shadows of the tall mountains to its west. We're at 5,000 feet and on our way to 9,500 for the return flight home. We've got clear skies, a tailwind, and the prospect of a peaceful sunset flight. Owens Lake is beautiful in this moment, but it's hard to say that's true most of the time. With its water sources diverted away, in many of the past 100 years, it's been mostly a dry and dusty hardpan. There's little distinct shoreline and no recreational facilities. 
Much of the lake bed has been formed into evaporation ponds for mineral extraction, and other large portions have been engineered for dust control. The lake itself is just not scenic, though it's an important part of some of the most dramatic scenery in the world. Half an hour on it, we're at 9,700 feet, over the southernmost slopes of the Sierra Nevada, between Tehachapi and Bakersfield. An undercast from off the Great Central Valley has transformed the mountain scenery into one of oceans and islands. Dust draws out longer at this altitude, and in its last light, the colors are sublime. The suburban cities of Antelope Valley sparkle like diamonds in the distance. Camarillo Airport's beacon is flashing and visible some 25 miles off. We'll be there in 10 minutes. Off to the left, the city of Los Angeles becomes a lake of light. Then it occurs to me, though the Owens Lake was deprived of its water so that LA would have it instead, it's really just a transformation. Owens Lake, a body of water under the desert sun, has here become a lake of light under the night sky.